It's a cold one. We're in Winnipeg. It is minus 31. I think that is uh, tw negative 23 Fahrenheit. It's cold. Um, it's supposed to go down to uh, minus 41 tonight. Uh, that is negative 40 Fahrenheit. There's no difference. Um, I like to do a little bit of history with Winnipeg and uh, we're coming up to Henderson Highway there um, and uh, you know I just noticed the gas was almost a dollar thirty per liter Canadian and uh, you know we got a lot of history in our city um, and what does the city mean to others or to other people because Winnipeg is kind of a strange place because you're stuck here because if you go west or east um, you're right in the middle of Canada um, it's one of these places where in the old days um, we're heading downtown here you can see and they're building building another building there well that's pretty nice but um, Winnipeg has always been this place where it's the peg in the road People used to come here before the train line was finished. So CP Rail and CN built their railways and they stopped both of them in Winnipeg. They didn't go any further um, till there was more settlers moving out there by foot and wagon carriage and everything else. Winnipeg was the last spot um, before going west. And... Um, a lot of people stayed. Uh, they didn't want to journey on to neighboring provinces like Saskatchewan and Alberta. And then when the train was built going into British Columbia, the only way to, to get to British Columbia was taking mountain passes, and that would take three to four months. So most people took a safer journey and took a boat around Cape Horn. This is before the Panama Canal was built. So you can imagine people back then, you know, when they came here, Winnipeg was sort of this factory city uh, where they made thick winter clothing, fur coats. Um, we had the Hudson Bay Corporation here. And we had many shops, uh, big name shops at the time, like Eaton's and the Bay and Woolworth's and, you know, different places. They don't exist anymore. They all shut down. Uh, this part of town you're looking at used to be part of Chinatown still is um, Chinese community is smaller now um, but uh, yeah it's, it's part of these places where when you were an immigrant and immigrated to the country um, if you could work a sewing machine you would get a job you wouldn't get paid much though I think it was like in early 1910 it was something like uh, five cents an hour or you do piecework uh, per piece you'd make something like a penny or a quarter penny so I mean it was you know the wages have always been low here but that was the factory area where you had um, many shops making stuff for home home goods and home use it was cheaper to make it here and then distribute you distribute it to out Canada because you're in the west and east sort of match up what's a good thing you know what I mean like your center of everything um, so I mean it's an exchange district is the older district but uh, you know many factories when Winnipeg first started um, you know people settled down they built stuff nice but they also saved a penny or two um, you know, there was always a part of a class in this city and ruggedness at the same time. Um, you know, you had the famous jewelry shop here and camera shop 
and the building is still there today. It looks a little different, but it's still there. They didn't take it down. You know, when the roads were, it looked like a Wild West town. Um, board sidewalks. And this is in the 1920s, late 20s. This is the early, uh, I think, uh, 1905. And, you know, like most, some of these buildings are still standing. Um, some of the homes, these homes were built, are still standing. Um, but Winnipeg has always been this very, um, you don't want to stay long. And if you don't, you're stuck here for life. It's like a Twilight Zone movie. Um, you know, pe settlers from all over the world settled into Winnipeg. I mean, Ukrainians, Poles, Germans, Russians, British, Irish, everything. Like, the whole kit and caboodle has moved here before, right? So, and now it's different now. Now you get other people from different countries inside. So, streetcars are no longer here, sad to say. Too bad they ripped them out. There's a the legislative ground. Um, you know, the old farmer's market doesn't exist anymore. Not City Hall. It's not there. But you've got a sense of community. But since the epidemic, it's not here anymore. But, uh, you know, it's sad to see that uh, no one takes care of these uh, photos anymore. Um... Or talks about them because they're very interesting to talk about. I'm going to make a, a part two, um, talking about my uh, city of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And uh, you can see the couple, look at the, there's no roads, it's just dirt on the road. And they had board sidewalks here till um, 1967. So you imagine they had planks of wood for sidewalks. You know. And there's some stores are gone. They torn them down. There's some buildings that are gone. But a lot of them remained. They stayed up. You know, the horse and carriage might not be there, but the car will would still be there. The old train station, I think it's a school now. You know, and there's like, I think that's a fire hall. I think that fire hall is still there. And, you know, you got Main Street here. And, uh. You know, here there's Bank of Montreal on Portage and Maine. It's still there. You, know, it's, you can still go there. There's buildings next to it. That building's also there. It's being built at the time in that photo. You know, it's I have uh I'll have I'll I'll make another couple of parts to this video. So uh you might like uh like to tell the story about Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada.